Yo, mama. You want to sit? Yeah. I'm here for support. All right. Emotional support. Thank God. You'll be my emotional uh, service animal. And give my two cents where needed. Okay. All right. Let me know when you're going on. Yeah, I just started it. So let people come in. Okay, got the notification. Perfect. Mom's also sitting in on it. She's going to add her... Um, five know, cents. Five cents. Ten cents. Ten cents. Twenty-five cents. Thirty cents at this point. A dollar. Okay. <laughs> and um, it's going to be one more success story. Oh, boy. Hello, my love. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Oh, hang on. Let me turn your volume up a little bit. Can you guys hear her? Do you guys want to, do you want to just say something real quick so that way they can give a little feedback? Hi, guys. Okay. I think that should be good enough volume. Okay. All right, my love. I'm excited to hear your story, as usual. I think I always am because you're one of those people that, um, mom's also sitting here just so you know. Um, she's one of my girls that, like, every time I go live, her SP will constantly message her. Mm -hmm. Or ask her out or invite her over. Or she's like one of those. Whenever you do a live? Yeah, like like she will always be one of those people that like gets movement as she's watching the live. I love so, it. And I just think that that's so hilarious. And I just love it so much. <laughs> but listen, I am going to let you speak a little bit. However you would like to start and begin and however you feel most comfortable. Um, but yeah, let me know if you want me to chime in also, and I will do that. But I think probably it's easier for you to give a little bit of an introduction because you've actually been following me for quite a long period of time and all of yeah. your success has really come just from my free teachings. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a, another proof that, you know, you don't even need me per se to be able to, you know, access this type of success that everything right. is already out there for you it's just the implementation or you know being capable of internalizing those answers and putting them into action that's really the differentiating factor sometimes yeah absolutely go for it okay so to start off um i've been following Persis since the end of july of 2022 uh when I had found her, like, I was really, like, down bad on my luck on, like, literally, like, everything. Um, my SP had broke up with me two days prior to me finding Persis. Um, I was really, like, distraught. I was so heartbroken. Like, I didn't know where to start off. Like, I was so, I wanna, like, I don't want to say desperate, but I was desperate. Like, I was begging for him back. I was you know, showing up to his house. I was doing, like, all the crazy, crazy things that, you know, after a breakup you would do. Um, and then you had came up on my For You page. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this seems so fake, but, like, so real at the same time, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, the first teaching that I had found was, um, you know, changing the perspective of your desire. So... The first day that I had found you, I started changing my assumptions about my SP, like, head on, like, headstrong. Like, I, everything that I was doing, I was just, you know, going going for it. So, after that, we got back together two days after that. Two days. We were mm -hmm. good for about three weeks, I would say. Three weeks, we were good. And then, you know, the same old thing started happening that was previously happening. Mm -hmm. So, I had found out that, you know, you had to change your self-concept around that time so with that being said um that was just you know the I don't know how to really explain it like that was like you know what I needed because like me personally I was just going through a lot like I didn't see myself being worthy of you know him or anything for that matter and he told me that he didn't want to be with me he told me that you know um he didn't love me. He didn't. He didn't want anything to do with me anymore, like at all. So that broke me down after that. After that point. Um. So we're getting around to September. That's when I started like going full blown into my self concept, not worrying about SP at all. And um, two weeks after me, you know, working on myself, he emailed, he emailed me because he had walked through everything. He emailed mm -hmm. me and he had told me that, you know, he missed me. 
Um, he wanted to be back with me, everything like that. So that night that he had emailed me, he had showed up to my house. He showed up to my house. He was crying. It was raining outside. It seemed like something out of a movie. Like, it felt so weird and so strange. Like, like why are you at my house crying at my door? All of that. It was just like, whoa, this can't be for real. And with that being said, um, he just was like, he was different around the time that I had, I had, you know, um, after I started working on my self-concept, he was a little bit different. Okay. And um, uh, at the day that he was crying, um, he explained to me that, like, you know, there's nobody that that works for me that's like you. Like, you're so different. Like, I don't know what I was doing and all this stuff. And, um, you know, we ended up getting back together after that. And then same thing happened. He broke up with me again. And you know what? At that point, I was just like, okay, like, I really don't care. Like, it is what it is. And then... Um, around October, he was like, um, he was like, I missed you. Like all this, all the same stuff, it, it kept happening over and over again. Like he missed me. He loved mm-hmm. me, all this stuff. And I just couldn't figure out what it was that, that, you know, kept repeating the same cycle. So it was so weird. And, um, at that point I just was like, I was giving up on him. Like, I was just like, I can't keep doing this to myself. Like, it's not, it's not fair. And everything like that. So he told me, like, you know, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm like, okay, if you're willing to change, okay. And um, I'm still re- I'm still working on my self-concept, but I'm also trying to, like, you know, change concept of desire as well. Yeah. And um, so in November, like, we, we were trying to go no contact, but he can't, like, leave me alone for some reason. Like, he's always, you know around because like we live literally like two blocks from each other so like we always see each other and he's always trying to like you know come over or like you know trying to be you know friends i guess you could say but we're more than friends like we, we do things that friends wouldn't normally do with each other yeah so um around november um he started like you know taking me to lunch every day he, he would take me to lunch every day after work um, lunch, we'll go to his house, he'll take me to the movies, we'll go go-karting, like, we'll do, like, you know, friendly things, but, like, it was more than friends, like, he'll look at me, right. and say, like, he'll say, love you, like, he'll say a lot of stuff that you really wouldn't normally say, and um, one day, I had uh, picked him up from work to go to lunch, and he had asked me, he was like, um, would you want to, like, move in together? I was like, what? He was like, would you want to move in together? Like, you know, our households, like, they're toxic and everything like that. And, um, like, you seem like, you know, you're willing to move in with me. And I just wanted to ask if you wanted to move in with me. I was like, yeah, of course I will move in with you. Like, yeah, why wouldn't I? Wait, so how long did that take out of curiosity? I'm already um, interrupting you, but I'm curious. Mm-hmm. And I think somebody else asked as well. Mm-hmm. How long did it take? Yeah. Um, I know you got a little bit of in and out in the very beginning, yeah. but okay. like in from the very beginning, also your results were always pretty freaking quick. I yeah, feel like your always. subconscious mind is pretty impress uh, impressionable, mm-hmm. if that's the correct uh yeah. the correct one. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like you know, from the point asking me to like move in with him. Yeah, because the thing is, you've had so many, like, I guess you could say ends to your manifestation because it's almost like you've been manifesting in steps, which is totally cool because I find that to be easier as well. But like, yeah, I mean, you have you've gotten like, you know, from the communication that took like two days and then something Mm -hmm. else took a short period of time. And it's like crazy how fast it went for you. Yeah, it, it always moves fast for me. But from the point from him asking me to move in, like, we were in no contact for a week. And mm-hmm. um, that's, like, that whole week, we were, we were going out and getting lunch that whole entire week. And then that previous Tuesday, he had asked me that I want to move in with him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I was just like, yeah, of course I'm moving with you. Like, why wouldn't I want to move in with you? And um, by getting to, like, uh, like December now, um we were, like, in and out of communication here and there because, like, I told him that, like, you know, like, I wanted to, like, pull back and just, like, focus on myself. And he said the same thing, so it was, like, mutual. Yeah. But every time that, like, I'll say that, he'll end up texting me. Like, he'll always end up texting me out of nowhere, like, 
I was just, I guess, like in my, in my, in my mind, like, like it just knows that I want him to, like, you know, reach out or yeah. That. So he'll reach out and like ask me how are you, like can I see you, like I miss you, and all that other stuff. So yeah, I'm not gonna like you know pass it up because like I still want him, like I still love him, like I'm not gonna you know deny it. But um, mm-hmm. around Christmas time, uh, he invited me to his house for Christmas because like I wasn't expecting to um, you know be with him on Christmas. Actually, he um, said happy birthday to me on my birthday because my birthday is December 10th. Mm-hmm. That's when I got back in communication on my birthday. And then from that week on, like, we were spending, like, every day together, like, how we normally would, like, when we were together. Okay. And we stopped for a week, and then that's when he texted me on Christmas and asked me that I want to go over and, like, you know, spend time with his family because I'm cool with his sister, his mom, and everything like that. Like, we're all, like, one big family. Mm-hmm. And um, we hung out for Christmas um and then new year's eve came new year's eve that was like we had a big big argument because of something his best friend had said to him that was not true like that was not true like at all so i don't know where that came from we were both like you know intoxicated and like the argument was just like terrible when tequila's like, involved you know it's always messy no i'm just kidding, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. yeah <laughs> um like when- we were intoxicated argument was really bad mm-hmm. um and I asked him I was like if that was true like why would you care and he was like because I still love you and like I just shut up I was like okay I did uh. it but I told him that like that wasn't true so if you love me and you then why do you believe what your best friend said I'm not gonna lie to you like I never I never lied to him like at all so why would you believe something like that that your best friend said and his best friend was like always out to get him all the time and I always told him that but he didn't believe me so I was like okay but come to find out his best friend likes me and his best friend is dating one of my friends. Okay. So that was All right. a little We're just gonna <laughs> just we're just gonna little... add a bunch of different things in here, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little weird. I was like, okay. So, um coming to present day, um, where we have constant communication now, like mm-hmm. he's doing really well in my eyes. Like he's always contacting me, he's always asking how I'm doing. Um, the only problem, like, right now that we have is, like, uh, he doesn't want to go out as much anymore. Because, mm-hmm. like, we usually like, we'll go outside and, like, have a, you know, a good day. But recently he hasn't been wanting to do that. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to think that because, like, I like to go out. I like to have fun. And yeah. he's like that. Too. But, like, right now he just doesn't want to. I don't know if it's because he's going through whatever he's going through at the moment. That's just a but, reason, though. That's just, like, a circumstance. I think that's just an interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> And if there's one thing I want to add, because I think somebody asked a question in here already for the success story. This happened when she dropped SP affirmation and and focused on her own SC. Now, I would definitely want you to mention um, what you feel, but I'm going to talk about my interpretation from just watching her because she's just Uh someone that's gotten success from all the free teaching. So from what I know, she had an issue in the beginning a little bit with self-concept. She fixed that. She's manifested SP in and out multiple times. Unfortunately, this obviously wasn't the plan for him to go in and out multiple times. But her problem was mainly actually the concept of him. That once Mm -hmm. he was in front of her, she kind of like almost forgot manifestation, forgot how important it is to stay on that mental diet and continue to like be in the gym, building that mental muscle of yours. Because Mm -hmm. when he was in front of her, whatever he would say or not say, do or not do think or feel or act or not think or feel or act she would take it and internalize it poorly so then that manifested quite quickly in the opposite direction because her subconscious mind although was fresh open for the new blessings was more saturated from past experience technically to believe the negative when it came up and be like oh hang on you know kind of situation so that's where she kind of lost her footing a little bit now let correct me if i'm wrong on that if that is in itself a giant assumption but that's what i've known about your story yeah that's basically what basically it's just um like my self concept it was like it was really like poor because i thought that i was good like you know when we first got back together when i first found you everything was fucked but then um once we had broke up and i started to feel like really like bad about myself. So then I was just like, okay, I need to drop that and worry about me. Yeah. Once I started doing that, he started coming in and out. And then that's when I figured out that it was um, 
him, like my interpretation of him. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. We have one more question over here. What do you think is the best recommendation? Self-concept first or SP or can you do them both at one time? You can do them both, mm-hmm. but I, I would rather focus on self-concept. If I knew that in the beginning of my journey, I would have been high and back full blown. Yeah. And this is my this is my interpretation. This is my two cents. Um, I think this. I think if you already have a low self concept or a self concept that needs improving, when you try to do them both together, let's be honest. Where will your subconscious naturally dominantly want to put you? It's gonna want to dominantly give attention to the opposite person, place, or thing, regardless of it's an SP or money or something like that. It's always gonna have you be directed to the thing outside of you because we've been conditioned to believe that you know, the way that we can control our reality is to like go after it or do this or take action or try to convince or to try to act on it. But in all reality, you don't need to do any action at all. Your action comes from your mental action of, you know, doing your repetition, doing your visualization, meditation, affirmation, inner conversation, whatever floats your boat. Because at the end of the day, manifestation can be achieved a hundred thousand million different directions No two people's paths are perfectly alike. Think of it this way. If you're in the gym, and I've said this before, and people really resonated with this example, and your goal is to lose weight. You can lose weight by hot yoga. You can lose weight by weightlifting. You can lose weight by cardio. You can lose weight by diet. You can lose weight by boxing. That's the same thing with manifestation. That's why, That's why. pardon me, when some people come into the comments and are like, well, what was her routine that got her success? What were her affirmations? What was her this? What was her that? Her wounding is different than your wounding. What her subconscious mind responded to and resonated with is going to be different than what your subconscious mind resonates and um, responds to. Some people really need to just try it for themselves and see what resonates because there's no such thing as a faster technique than the other. The fastest technique is the one that resonates and changes your own mind that it is, is, you know, has already or is going to be happening for you. That's your only job. That's your only work. Then you don't even need to take action because you will be you know, quantum leaping into that parallel reality where this situation comes and seeks you out. Right. I believe that too. Yeah. And when they, I was one of those people too that always asked like, um, what, 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 what did somebody else do? Like, why are they getting faster results? Like, yeah. that was my issue too. And I had to learn for myself that, um, you know, what works for you is like, it works for you. What works for somebody else, that works for them, you know? Yeah. So you really have down with yourself and actually figure out what works for you. Yeah, love it. So tell me, what are some pieces of advice that you have? Where are you and your person now if you want to share? If you don't want to share or if you want to keep it to yourself for a little while longer, you can. But right now, yeah, go for oh, it. Okay. Right now, we're really, really good. Um, he's supposed to come over after work tonight. Um, nice. He's supposed to go to dinner and end up see a movie and then we're supposed to come back you know go to sleep together i guess yeah um, and right now we're looking for an apartment together okay and um, we're not officially back together yet but you know that that's you know i'm already in the state of us being together so it really doesn't matter i really yeah. don't care I but yeah we're good so what advice would you have? So you're basically on the way to just be moving in together and basically just be planning that future. Um, okay. Were they in no contact? Sorry, I joined late. Yeah, they were in no contact for a period yeah. of time. Okay. For sure. And she just focused on, you know, first and foremost, building the self-concept. Um, why don't you tell people? Oh, wait, how long did all of this take her? So why don't you, yeah, why don't you do a little bit of timeline action and then we can do like the full amount of time. So um, back in July, I manifested back in two days. So we were together from, I guess, like January, I mean, July 27th to August 27th. Okay. Like, um, after that, we were in no contact for two weeks from that point. Mm-hmm. After that point, um, he texted me back. And after that, we were back in no contact for only a week. And then 
started talking again, and now we're still, you know, still going. Okay. Like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah. we've been, you know what I mean? I don't know what I'm trying to say. I can't look like, we're, we're, we're back talking from that point, like, consistently. Got it. Got it. Understood. And now you guys are on the verge of basically moving um, in together and shopping around for apartments. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. And yeah. so, yes, this is my question to you. And I would love for you to give the people out there um, some motivation or encouragement. What is your okay. advice for people that are, you know, I'm sure you, I mean, obviously you've been in my community for literally ages. Mm -hmm. But what is your advice to some people that are still struggling in any manifestation, whether that be with money, whether that be with SP, whether that be for anything at all that you see that you can feel like perhaps now at your more educated level, having different level of mastery, Mm -hmm. knowledge, proficiency, what is your recommendation to them? I say repetition and persisting. Those two things help me out a lot. Um, Without consistency, like you won't get like you have to be strong minded like you have to know what you want is what you want and if you don't have that mindset get in what you want yeah Mm -hmm. definitely definitely love that um Mm -hmm. sorry I'm reading I'm trying to see are there any other questions I needed to stop in and say oh that's just a compliment oh that's so sweet uh, Persis, I needed to stop and say out of all the coaches I watched you, you've been the only coach that's dumbed it down for me. I hope that's a compliment. Yes, I do explain in a very um, simplistic manner. And I, I'm one of those people, out my legs, um, that analyzes things to like the nth degree and literally breaks it down quite, quite, quite simplistically, like answers yes. to all the nuts and bolts. And I'm so glad I found you because like every other coach that like, you know, I try to to work with or like I see their contract like they're they would like really like discourage me because like they'll say things that like are limiting and then like when I come to you it's just like everything is just straightforward and explained and break like broken down and the science behind it I'm a science person like I love mm. what's behind manifesting so that's what also helped me because like I like you know the context behind it yeah. rather than you jumping into it not knowing anything about it that helped me out a lot yeah. so content creators if you could even call them that like i don't believe nothing they say like i'm glad i found you first because oh my gosh like you really changed my life i'm out of debt too as well like you helped me get out of debt oh yeah that's right did you you manifested some money right yes oh my gosh do you want to talk about that real quick for like five minutes yes no problem um so jumping right into it um i was in five thousand dollar debt from um student loans like nothing crazy but um it was that um so I don't have any like you know um limiting beliefs behind money or anything like that but um I just told myself like you know money just flows to me easily like that's all I just kept telling myself like money is consistently coming to me all of that so um I got an email from the IRS saying that um it was paid off I don't know how it got paid off. I really don't know mm-hmm. how it got paid off at all. Paid off. And I haven't heard that. They, they sent me a five thousand, or not five thousand, five hundred dollar check, and then two weeks after that, I got a um, two hundred dollar check from the IRS. I don't know how, where, why. I wasn't questioning nothing, so it just it just came. Like I don't know how to really explain it. Like it was just like magic. It's, it's crazy, Chris. I really don't know. I don't know how, but it happened. Listen, no need to even question it. Just accept it. You know what I mean? But it's so funny because you're actually the second person to tell me the IRS just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, changed things. Actually, maybe the third or fourth, at least the one that I've seen. I get so many success stories daily. Oh, my God. I try so hard to keep up with my phone. But it's just crazy with my notifications these days. That's why I put a new... um tab in my bio of people that want to share the success story to make sure that I see it because otherwise my comments are getting too crazy um but yeah there was another woman she came on and she had the $60,000 success story in two weeks got a house two new men and um forgiven debt in the past that had made her um not capable to buy a house because someone had taken out a 
loan under her name falsely. Mm. She was a veteran and she cured her CPTSD in 14 days also which if you remember that was that like very southern accented lady that like y'all better listen up here kind of situation I don't know if you may have seen that one that was a good one though oh man I loved that success story IRS just called her out of nowhere and was like we are going to be compensating you $60,000 for all this (laughs) stuff and we are so sorry and we give our sincerest apologies and this woman sent me the IRS email and I was like ain't no way ain't no way because you think of the irs and you're like how can you how can you alter that type of such a professional like you know government-based system you can alter anything and then if you remember there was the other woman in the facebook group i'm not sure if you saw um she did a credit score jumping of what was that like 30 or 40 points i think so yeah in like 30 days and my mom goes That doesn't happen. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell anybody. It's like, it's hard to, um, like, that's a lot of points, you know? Because that's not the way that that system works. That's not how the the scores work. Yeah. So I don't know how those things got rearranged, uh, rearranged around. Pardon me if I can only speak. Um, but it's so crazy to see how things work out. And the fact that even just like my free teachings was capable to get you out of debt. Listen, these are the types of stories I live for because Persis is a woman of service. She loves to help people. She loves to give back to the community. And it's like, I'm just so happy for you. Literally just so happy for you. And I know you're going to go off and manifest even more things, but it just makes me happy to see you guys thriving like that's literally literally the best way to put it thank you and i'm joining your math class and be class and the obsession um course mm-hmm. as well so i have no doubt about it like i'm on that and i want i love it um we have another success story here in the comment it looks like irs told me i owed money on past taxes and they affirmed that they made a mistake wow that's nice that's also a good one um, so let me ask one more question because I did see one more. Oh gosh, where did it go? Is it fine to ask what was the affirmation routine that worked for her? Well, would you like to share that or would you like to give any pointers or what would you like to do? Um, personally, like I don't have a set routine. I just go go into it like whatever I feel is right in the moment. Like I do inner conversations. Love inner conversations. Um, yeah, I do inner conversations. I'll do um, sleep of limbos, or I'll do um, just affirming all day. I love it. Literally. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of affirming all day. I feel like if anything, I need to get a new routine down for myself. What's your inner conversation for yourself? Yeah, I was going to say, because it's like my time. I just don't have time anymore. And the thing is, the beauty of before me blowing up was like, I had time to kill. <laughs> I had time to kill. Now, now I'm lucky to just get through my day and accomplish everything that I need to accomplish. You know, I'm just going to take over for you. Yeah. Okay, we have one more question here, which is a good one. Did you struggle with fears or doubts at all along your journey? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, the fears, had, the fears that I had with the people, um, that he wasn't going to come back to me. Um, and for my own, like, my own self-image, like, I felt like I wasn't, you know, worthy of being loved. And, like, I, I had abandonment issues. And I mm-hmm. saw that. So... I don't have a dad. Well, I do have a dad, but my dad was there. Yeah. So, like, you could borrow I, mine. I could ship him out to you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, I don't, you know, I had really bad, you know, abandonment issues. I solved that, you know, within three weeks of me affirming and all of that. But now I'm doing really well with my, like, myself is, like, up there. So, you know, I get complimented by that I don't even like like that aren't that aren't attractive <clears throat> uh, some guys like actually are attracted but i don't want them because like i want what i want yeah and i'm just doing better and i have a way better paying job um oh, that's nice yeah better it's job fun. more raise more money irs you know mm-hmm. did all this fun stuff for her yeah, moving also, in yeah um she had liver disease i also Oh, but, did, who had um, liver disease? Sorry. 
Yeah, liver disease. Who did? Who, she, who did though? My mom. Oh, mom. Okay. Now she's doing better. Her levels are back to normal. She doesn't need um a liver transplant anymore. Like she's doing amazing. Love that. Mm-hmm. Love that she's so doing- much. People sometimes, mm-hmm. and I think I even made a video on it a while back, um, when I made my video on like manifesting, um, you know, curing of ailments and things of that nature, <laughs> some people got so upset. Oh my mm-hmm. God, can't even begin to tell you. But like, if people are open-minded to it, like there's really nothing that's off limits. I've yeah. seen crazy stuff happen and I've even seen people do it for other people. I've seen mm-hmm. children manifest... Um, you know, the curing of their parent or the curing of their mother or the curing of their brother or the curing of an uncle or this or that. You can align to any parallel reality that you want and live over there if you don't like where you're currently at. All that you got to do is change your self-concept, change your concept of desire and make a firm conviction and say that this is what it is until it becomes a matter of fact in your head and everything Mm -hmm. else is going to change. Sometimes it's just, I think, so hard for people to understand because it's like, I think we've just been told you need to do things this way. Or how is the cancer going to go away without chemo? Oh, or like if I have an autoimmune disease, then this is just something I have to live and die with. But it's really not something that has to be that way. That is true. Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, guys. Yeah. Well, this was fun. Do you have any other last minute things you would like to say? I really appreciate you hopping on just last minute like this. No problem. I know that you need your little time. Besides TikTok, I understand this. No, I know. And I think this will be hugely fun for people to play back and watch as well. And I know you're on vacation, so I don't want to keep you any longer, but you please enjoy yourself and keep me posted. And now I get to finally see you in some of my programs. So we're going to definitely have a lot of fun and a lot of things to look forward to. Yes, of course. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How fun. Yeah, that was good. So many different things. Oh, definitely. Do you have anything that you want to add or things that you caught? Um, Owie, my hand is really hurting me here. Is your hand falling asleep on you? Yeah, it really is. Um, I like this inner conversation thing, you know? Yeah. If anybody is not aware of inner conversations or how to do them or how they happen, um, I have started to finally lead people through little exercises. Um, and they tend to be pretty fun to do. Um, I don't often do them on my page, but I do do them in my groups. But essentially, just to give you guys a very small um, peek of what an inner conversation is, is it's essentially when you go into your mind. Now, you can close your eyes if you want to, or you can keep them open. And you just have a conversation with the person that you want to hear um, in your ear, telling you the beautiful things that you want to receive. Even if it's a job acceptance, even if it's love, even if it's money, you can pick a common person in in coordinates with you. So let's say I'm doing money. Maybe I'd want to hear my brother's voice in my ear saying, man, Persis, I can't believe you manifested that amount of money. And because it's easy for me to mimic my brother's voice in my head, I would play that on loop for maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it was. Until I felt good about it, I would feel all the sensory vividness of it, maybe where we were, maybe what I was wearing or things of that nature. But you just want to create a very sensory vivid experience where you loop a conversation or maybe you can have like a self-talk in the form of your head where you basically just continuously talk back and forth with your person or just talk like them talking to you in your head all day. You are so beautiful. I love you so much. You're the best thing to ever happen to me. You are a once in a lifetime person. You mean the world to me. I would do anything to be with you. You're the light of my life. You you are the source of my happiness. You light me up and fulfill me so deeply. And like I said, there's really no hard and fast rules. So your voice, his voice, the next door neighbor's voice, 
But he said, go in your mind, have a conversation with that person in your ear. Yeah, like like talking back and forth. Talking back. Like, like if I was to want to hear, maybe maybe I wanted to manifest you um, losing 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'd hear you in my mm-hmm. head come to me and say, Persis, I lost 10 pounds. And I would, I would loop that for like a few minutes until it felt real. Until it felt like we actually had this conversation. And then I would just leave it be. And maybe I'd have to do it a couple of times to feel comfortable. But that's also a way to manifest. And it doesn't matter whether it's your voice, his voice, you know, any voice. But listen, the only goal we have, as we know, in manifestation is to just change your assumption to think, feel, believe, or assume that you have, are going to have, or have already got something that you want and let all the other magic fall into place Hmm. interesting so it's just another technique that feels really good like sometimes if you go into your head like i said whether you close your eyes whether you don't it doesn't matter whether you hear their voice or no voice it doesn't really matter but you're just plying your brain with more and more familiarity that this is your truth and this is what's happening Mm -hmm. is going to happen or has already happened past present or future it really doesn't matter for me actually i i find future tense affirming is where i manifest the fastest so i always recommend future tense affirming because i feel like the individuals that are on my page they are um little mini clones of myself meaning that they are the scientific based people of this community that are overthinking everything and they just want that more not delusional style of manifestation that one thing that I could never get down in the manifestation community was being delusional especially as a woman that is very highly educated with a degree of surgery, physical, or physician assistant, surgical PA, and things of that nature. You can't really tell me to be delusional. That doesn't work for me. So I find that many coaches teach and preach different things. I can't do the delusional thing. If you can do it, God bless you. It, it's not for me though. So I prefer future tense affirming. And as a matter of fact, I actually manifest the fastest when I put it in future tense. So many common myths that delusional affirmers, I think, have put on non-delusional people. Um, But there's nothing like it puts it into the future or anything like that. Because if anything, you feel excitatory feelings. You feel like, oh shoot, this is about to happen. I can feel like it's going to happen at any moment now. And you don't have to feel crazy. You know, you don't got to feel like you have to fight with your logical brain. That's just my two cents. Example, example of what, guys? I'm not sure what you want an example of. Any last minute closing statements? I think I think I'm pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I didn't have much to say today. Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. But yeah, I mean, I just okay. love like anything like it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's meant to happen. I'm claiming this is going to happen. Anything like that. Basically anything that's just a future tense statement. So please don't overcomplicate it. Don't take it into something else. Um... But any future tense statement, any future tense sentence works out just perfectly. And it just helps you to feel better. It helps you to be like, okay, you know what? I'm honoring that it's not here now, but I know it's going to happen. I know this is going to happen. I know it's going to come to me. I know it's meant for me. I'm claiming that it's going to come into my life. Anything like that, that can help to calm you down right now is I think the best situation for individuals that do not resonate with a delusion (laughs) style, you know, affirmation or visualization, because that's also not for everybody. And it's really hard to convert somebody that is an over logical mind into that. Just change the tense. It's going to happen. Yeah, like it's going to happen. You can do it's already happened. You can do past also. I oh, know it's already now. It's going to happen. Yeah. But yeah, 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'll also upload this on YouTube um, sometime today. I'm going to go out again with the fam. And yeah, we got we, we will talk again soon.